All right, y'all, do you see this? This looks like just an ordinary vehicle, but no, this is our new tow vehicle. We finally, after two years, got the hitch put on our Nissan Pathfinder. If you've been following the channel, you know we've been pulling it with a truck. Well, this is the first pull that we've done on the Camp Easy Teardrop with our Pathfinder. And this could not have come at a better time because the set power company just reached out to us and sent us a 12 volt refrigerator freezer that we're gonna start carrying in this thing. So now listen, I'm not gonna forsake my cooler just yet. It has been with us for the last couple of years and we've had a lot of yummy meals out of it and cold drinks, but I am excited to give this set power a try. Now, full disclosure, they sent this to us free of charge. They said, hey, we'd like for you to do a review on this unit. So we did not buy it, but I'm gonna give you a non-biased review. And we actually have already had it out one time. We took it on a camping trip recently to the Harrison Bay State Park. And I'll just go ahead and spoiler alert, it worked out really well. So I'm driving down the road and the 12 volt refrigerator is actually setting inside the teardrop right now. And it's running off the teardrop's 12 volt battery, which is really cool because the battery's being fed by solar power. It's a bright sunny day and I'm actually putting out more energy from the solar than what the refrigerator is consuming. So I could drive all day like this and not have to worry about pulling too much power out of the battery. So let's check the temperature. Right now, it's registering 41 degrees. So let's open it up and see what the temp gun says. The bacon is at 37. The suck bag taters is at 30, about 37, 38. Let's move a couple things around here. I've got a jar of milk in the bottom that's at 39. So, the 41 is just a couple degrees off so we can calibrate that so to calibrate it i will push and hold the plus and minus button until you see the function there's one two function three i happen to know from the manual i need to be on function one so i'm going to set my temperature down about four degrees and that should bring it from 41 to 37. there we go You've seen us make suck bag taters for supper before. Well, today we're gonna to make them for breakfast and we're looking at potatoes, onions and peppers with some smoked sausage in there. And we're gonna put a little egg in there to make it kind of breakfasty. One of the nice things about this is we're not gonna to have to pre-oil the skillet because the oil's already inside here. And we put this in the vacuum bag or the suck bag. Oh yeah, look at that. Already got the oil in it. How convenient is that? Now that we've got the Nissan Pathfinder, it happens to have a 12 volt outlet on the left side of this thing. I can plug it right in. Now, we left the house of what, about 30 minutes ago? Yeah. And I had to set it um, to 35 degrees. And looking at the display, it's right on 35 degrees. So it cooled down from, I think it started at 70. It cooled down to 35 in just about a half hour. So that's like really quick. I know an RV refrigerator won't do that. No. I know if, if we go on a camping trip with a large camper, what is it? We said it the night before. Yeah, not, at least the night before. Yeah. Sometimes a couple days. And this one's coming up to temperature in like a half hour. Now, this is a compressor-based um, cooler. Now, it's actually, when I say cooler, it's a, it's a refrigerator slash freezer. They say it'll range from like minus 4 degrees up to 68, depending on how you want to use it. Um, and I did another test on it also on freezing some popsicles. Mm -hmm. And these dudes were rock hard. Now it's time for the popsicle test. I just turned the temperature down to zero degrees and it's at 31 right now working its way down. And I put some freezer pops in here. I put some in the bottom laying down 
some on top of the compressor ledge laying down, and then some standing up with air around them. We'll come back in the morning and see if these are frozen. It is the next morning. I had it set to zero degrees and it says it's one degree, 12.3 volts. And let's see if the popsicles are frozen. These are the ones that were standing up on their edge. They're nice and frozen. The ones in the bottom are frozen. And sure enough, the ones on the compressor ledge are frozen. So I've been in here with it for a few minutes and I noticed that it's up to four degrees. So my assumption is that when it starts warming up a little bit, the compressor will kick on. Right now it's not running. No sound coming from the compressor area. Now it's up to five degrees. Let me open this thing and see if the compressor kicks on. Well, yeah, sure did, I just heard it. I don't know if you can hear that fan running or not. Um, now, I will say there's one thing about it that she already doesn't like. Tell us what happened on the way here. Yeah, there's a little strap hanging down. On both sides, it's the handles. Yeah, it's a handle that you can uh, carry it around with. And it was swaying back and forth and it just kept bang, bang, bang in the car. <laughs> so we're going to have to tie those up. Yeah. But let's show you a little bit more about this cooler. You keep calling it a cooler. It's a refrigerator freezer. Yeah, I guess I do, don't I? I just, I've used the cooler for so long, I'm just used to calling it that. Yes, this is a refrigerator slash freezer. But talking about cooler, um, go over to the channel RV East Coast. Our good friends Eli and Fawn happened to do a review on this very same unit. And I think they actually used it as a cooler for a night to put a block of ice in there just to see what would happen. And actually a pretty good result. So run on over to their channel. As a matter of fact, I'll try to put a link to their uh, channel in the description below. So let me show you how I have this thing hooked up. There's a 12 volt cord that comes out of the bottom of the cooler near the compressor area. And hey, check out those wheels. It has wheels on one end that are real handy for pulling this thing around like a little wagon. But the 12 volt cord we have plugged into the side of our Pathfinder. And I didn't know until this evening, but even when the Pathfinder's not running, it's, it's live all the time, which is cool, but it could also run a battery down. So, during the nighttime at the campsite, I've got a Jackery unit that I'll be plugging into sometimes um, to keep the, the cooler running during the night. So let's check our power generator. This happens to be a lithium battery uh, power generator, and it is pulling a, a current of 48 watts at the moment. Now, if you've been on Patreon, you've probably already seen this unit. We're going to be doing a review on that coming up shortly, uh, but I'll, that won't be today. Or I've got a third option. I picked up, I think this is a 10 amp, 12 volt AC to DC power adapter. And basically I can just run an extension cord from the shore power at the campground to the vehicle and plug this thing into the, uh, the RV fridge here and power it that way. Now, just like a lot of the high-end coolers, and I did say cooler, um, it has like a refrigerator gasket on the inside of the lid, but you gotta make sure it's closed all the way. It's tall enough to be able to use as a table when you're at the campground. Um, also, um, it has four indentations on the top so that you won't have to worry about um, knocking over your pop or your drink or it's sliding off. Now, it happens to be that tall because it will hold 37 quarts. This is the TC35 model number, and this thing is huge. It'll hold like double almost of what our old Yeti cooler would. Mm -hmm. So not only are we gonna have dry storage, it's nice and cold, um, but we've also got a lot more of it. The only bad thing is you may want to load this in the back of your vehicle before you put your groceries in there because this dude gets heavy and also for those of you who like to go to costco or some of the big box stores this is fabulous to be able to take it with you so that you can keep it in here and you can keep it cold on the way home 
Now again, we did not pay for this unit. It was sent over for a review, and luckily we really like it. Um, but I will say, when they reached out to me, I did look it up on Amazon, and I was surprised to see that it was in the neighborhood of about 250 bucks. That was one of the reasons why we had never bought one before, because when we looked at them previously, they were like outrageously expensive. So I'm really surprised at what you get for a low price point. Now, I'm not trying to sell the product. I'm just telling you what my experience was, and, and knowing what I know now, I'd probably end up just buying one. So if you're new around here, one of our main goals is to find ways to make camping easier. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a lot of years in a large camper. We still have it and look forward to using it some this year. But I will say camping can be a hassle. I mean, there's a lot of prep work for us anyway, the way we do it going on a camping trip. And there's a certain amount of work when you get there. And when we built the teardrop camper, we wanted things to be more streamlined. We just wanted to be able to just uh, grab a couple things and go. Um, that's why I named the teardrop camp easy. And the fridge, you know, the experience we got on our first camping trip with it, I think it's going to do just that. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is a win. So, hey, we just started up a Patreon page. If you haven't checked that out, go to patreon.com slash camping camera. And I hope you liked today's episode. Um, got another product review coming up on the Jackery. Be sure to check back for that. Um, anything you want to say? No. All right. So until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.